Hello guys, this is an introductory video to Kubernetes. In this video, we're going to talk about why do you need to learn about Kubernetes. Next, we're going to de develop a Hello World application and deploy it to Kubernetes. Third, we're going to see what all features does Kubernetes provides. Fourth, we're going to understand the Hello World application in detail to see what exactly is going on internally and how the application really gets deployed to Kubernetes. And fifth, we're going to talk about uh, some of the most important components of Kubernetes, which is pods, services, and deployments. So let's jump right into it. So why do you need to learn Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is the most widely used uh, application deployment and orchestration technologies that is used these days. So it is essential for every DevOps engineer to know Kubernetes in detail. But even if you are not you are not a DevOps engineer, if you're a backend engineer or if you're a project manager, you should still know the basics of Kubernetes. So let's develop a Hello World application to understand what do we mean by deployment and orchestration of the application. So in this application, what we're going to do is we're going to create a node server and then we're going to package this node server using Docker. And then we're going to push the image of the container to docker repository if you don't understand these terms uh, like that's fine because we're going to cover these in detail uh, a bit later and then we're going to deploy this application to kubernetes right so we're going to declare some pod services and deployments again this would be covered in detail later in the video what all these mean and then we're going to test this application so we're going to create the simple node server and uh, for that, I add some import statements. So I'm using Node.js, right, which will handle some requests and which is going to return, in, increment the counter and also return the host name. Uh, so we declare the port on which it will be li listening and we add a counter to it. And next is we create the server. So a server has, a, like takes a request and a response, right? And now we're going to add a uh, logic related to handling of these requests. So, so we're going to ha handle a specific URL, which is node app, right? And uh, in case like uh, that does not match, we're going to return like a 404 and we're going to return like uh, the response as unknown path. But if it is matches, right, we're going to like, and if the method is get, so we set the connection as close like we said the header because sometimes like if we don't close the connection that produces like sticky sessions and all so uh, so this is a requirement of a test application right and uh, so the response that we send to the browser is we send hello world and then we send the counter and we also send like the host name that is on which the on which the application is running and then we increment the counter and increments it increment its number by one so as the requests are coming the counter would keep incrementing right so and if we see like the package.json for this file so this is where we declare like dependency is just like uh, use we are using these types and all because we use typescript and uh, other is we say npm start so which would just use ts node and use index.ts to start the app. So if you want to run it locally, we would say uh, npm start, uh, sorry, npm start. So which starts, which starts the application and starts running it locally. So let's hit the application. So what I need to do is I need to go to node app. All right. So, when I hit now, we see the counter is set as zero. And if I reload, the counter keeps incrementing, all right? And again, like if I go to some other URL, which I don't know, it's gonna complain me 404, right? So we see the app to be working. And now let's deploy it to Kubernetes. So to be able to deploy this application, we need to build this application first. So I've added a Docker file. It's a very plain file, which helps in packaging the application. So I will, uh, build the application by using docker build minus t and I just named the image as this name robin nakpal slash kubernetes tutorial and all right and then we would push this application to docker registry so for that we use docker push command and now we would write 
Kubernetes YAML definition file which will be used by Kubernetes to deploy our application. So here we're going to start by declaring an API version and then uh, this is we're going to declare like we're going to deploy something right and then we add some metadata for the file and then we specify that it has five replicas and uh, later like we can ignore this for now because it's out of the context for this video like out of the scope of this video but if you would want to know each of these concepts in detail like what deployments and all are so please check out my future videos because i'll be talking about each of these concepts in in detail uh, so i'm declaring like uh, a template for a pod and uh, what the template is it says a container right so the container name of the container is node app it could be any name but if you if you pay attention to the image right the image is with the same name that we push to docker registry so that's how kubernetes comes to know that what container it needs to deploy right so it's going to deploy like five replicas of that container right and now we need to declare some network connectivity stuff and all right for that we need to declare a service and uh, we declare like kind of a service service right and we could declare a uh, like we, we add name and all to it and then we use a type which is load balancer so this service is also going to load balance like the traffic to these to these containers so and it's going to be done in a round robin fashion and then uh, there's some port information like from which port uh, the service should be running and at what port and all it should be exposed and all and we can add some session affinity also like if we want the sticky session and all that could be done so this completes our, uh, so we, we don't need search and affinity and all. So this completes our basic definition fine file. So let's get started. Let's deploy this to Kubernetes now. So I am running a trimmed down version on of Kubernetes on my local, right? Which is known as mini cube. Uh, so it is very handy if you want to test like Kubernetes and all on your local. It does not provide all the extended functionalities of Kubernetes, but it, it is good enough to run on the local. So uh, Kubernetes also has a command line interface, which is known as kubectl. So in order to deploy the app, I would just say kubectl uh, apply minus F and give uh, the path of the file which we created. Kubernetes, yeah, right. So if you see in the file, we created like two major things one was the deployment and other was the service right so we get like the deployment created and the service created and uh, now when we say kubectl get all so basically this command is going to print all all the stuff that's there in kubernetes right that's running right now so if we see now when we said kubectl get all after that we see printing the name so these are the names of the pods or you can use containers for now so these are the five containers that are running and we see the status as running right so here we see like we were running five replicas and these are five replicas here and now if we see like the age was just created like few seconds ago and this is the new service that got created which was node app service and this is what we created here right which which does the load balancing and all yeah and um, so if we to see what deployment all means so if we just try to uh, delete a pod or a container so we could do that so let's try to delete this container uh, sorry we could just delete it like this so it is deleting this container and now if we check get all again so we see like it created a new container we deleted the old one but we still have five containers now right so kubernetes saw that only four containers was running because maybe one was deleted for some reason so if you see age for the other four container containers is 97 seconds but this one which was created new because we deleted one intentionally is six seconds so this is how deployments make sure that five are always running so to test the application we can't straight away hit uh, like any of these containers we need to hit like mini cube so we can get the ip of mini cube so this is the ip of mini cube 
and using this IP we can reach Kubernetes. So that's why we use services, right? So services exposed, export a port on this node and then further routes traffic to, to these containers. So if you see now, we're hitting the application on the IP which we got from Minikube, right? And uh, we say slash node app. And if you see, like uh, we, we say, we, we are returning the host name, right? So it uses node app deployment, that's the name of the deployment. And then it has some SHA ID corresponding to the container in which we have deployed it, right? So now if you see it's 612, it's the last digits. When we reload again, it changed to 80RC. And when we see again, like if you see, the host is changing, but the count is at zero. So we can see our request is going in a round robin fashion, right? So now it, we got the first request on RC, and then like still it is zero on like 51 and all, right? This is another another container which didn't get any requests so far. It's zero. So now we are reloading. So it got to this, right? So it, these are randomly sent. Right, so if you see, so you can see now like how easy it is to just declare a single file and set up this replicas and all, right? And then have the traffic load balance to all of these containers. So this is just the starting point, like where we declare the bare minimal functionality of Kubernetes, but Kubernetes has a lot of stuff that helps us manage uh, like container applications very easily. So here's the definition on Kubernetes website. So Kubernetes, also known as KATS, is an open source system for automating deployment, scaling, that means increasing the number, like scaling horizontally and all, uh, and management of containerized applications, right? So we saw like the features, right? We saw we were able to create deployments. So not just create deployments, like it is very easy to release the code also. You can select various configuration, various choices for deployments, right? It could be an incremental deployment or you could do canary releases and all also uh, using Kubernetes. Uh, next, we saw like service discovery and load balancing, which we already saw in our application, like by declaring a few lines we were able to load balance it and there are few strategies for load balancing also which could be which could be achieved by just changing the configuration next is horizontal scaling so we declare like five replicas like we deployed five containers right and we saw like uh, kubernetes uh, first like uh, pull those containers right created those and had and add those in running state and all so to just increase the number of containers we just have to increment that count or like decremented and that could be done just on the runtime uh, other is like it provides like very good support for secret and configuration management right so that does not have to live uh, in your app it is externalized and you could change it on the runtime as your application is running the next is storage orchestration which is very important like when you are sharing data between like various containers and all so we sometimes need storage space like hard disk and all so it provides very nice features to maintain it to to in order to orchestrate it and it also has self-healing uh, uh, like features means like if your container dies because of some reason or your container is getting a lot of errors and all it would try uh, reloading it right or restarting it right and then there are also a lot of other options like based on like if you want to restart your containers based on like cpu or memory usage and all you could do all that stuff also so let's try to understand the, our Hello World application in detail. And by the way, if you're liking the video so far, please click the subscribe button or the bell icon because it motivates me a lot to create more such videos. So on the left, we have the conventional way in which we used to develop our applications. So everything, the UI, all the other components or the services at all used to be part of a huge code base and then we used to deploy the whole chunk all together uh, to the servers so this huge chunk used to cause like a lot of slowness to the execution of the projects and uh, i remember when i was working on some of the bigger organizations we used to have release dates after a month right so suppose like the whole chunk used to get deployed after a month and it used to be very risky sometimes the deployment would even stretch to like few hours or like maybe one day also because something going if goes wrong 
it needs to be rewarded like the whole team needs to be called and then it needs to be uh, deployed again so then we transition to microservices so that the full chunk could be split into smaller pieces and different teams could work on those smaller pieces independently so it sounded good like the microservices pattern would solve all of the challenges that we faced in the monolithic uh, monolithic infrastructure or monolithic architecture but at that time microservices didn't have a lot of support of technologies and all uh, so there were a lot of challenges with microservices as well like managing the traffic and all between each of these components there were a lot of moving components right so it was difficult to deploy them in a, in a predictable way managing configuration and secrets and all for all of these components and managing like storage and all for these components also used to be a huge challenge so we knew that uh, the monolithic had a lot of problems but even moving to microservices was not an easy move because there was not a lot of like the microservices technologies had not developed so much and i had seen like many projects that doing the transition and many projects had failed because the transition was not smooth and even the microservices world had a lot of challenges but with kubernetes and few other technologies using microservices have become very easy and this is one of the default patterns which we use these days so the way to package our application into these microservices is using a container technology and docker is one of the most famous container technologies these days so what is a container a container consists of the entire application runtime which was a plain node server its dependencies which was node libraries for us right node modules and configuration files into one package so we didn't have any configuration files this package is then saved as in container image so we create an image out of it and then we push that image just like we push our code and this con uh, the container images become container containers at runtime right so we could have just ran the container on docker runtime also but since we were using kubernetes we want to like had the scaling features and all and have the deployment features and all so we declare like what was the image we want to use so kubernetes uh, ran those and created containers out of those images so coming back to our application so this was our application which was a plain file for now right just one file and then we had these libraries which were all these node modules right so there were no configuration files so we packaged it using uh, docker so this is like uh, the package descriptor so it says it says that uh, like this is the container we want to use and then on, on top of this this is what we want to apply so basically copy takes all the code right and then working directory says that where exactly it wants to execute next commands so we say npm install which installs all the libraries if anyone is missing that would be also installed an entry point is the command that we tell to the container that when it runs it needs to execute this command right so it says that it would run npm start and npm start is like it's it we have the start script here which says ts node right and it runs this index.ts which is this file so this is how we built the image and then we push the image to docker repository so we can see this this image that is pushed right and like it was pushed some time ago right so we see this is the name of the image and all so this is docker repository it is very similar to like just we have github repository which has the code and this has all the container images and uh, and then within kubernetes we declared that uh, what file like what is the image we want to use right so we want to use this image which we saw right and we want to use the latest version of it so this is then the kubernetes uh, descriptor so we say uh, so we use pods uh, which is a wrapper around containers so we declare a template of a pod right and then pods since we have to run multiple replicas of it so there is a container to run these uh, and with that container is known as deployment so deployment has not is a wrapper which has a lot of other functionalities which makes sure that like the count always remains as five that is the number of replicas that's needed if a container dies uh, deployment will make sure that creates a new container 
and uh, and the number of containers matches the number of replicas that we have created here and next we saw was our service right which made sure like we the traffic was hitting this node which was the minikube node and then it was further routing the traffic to this port 3000 which was for our, for our node application so in our hello world application we just use three uh, most uh, like most use or uh, components of kubernetes there are a lot more but we just use three right because to keep the thing simple and the first one is pods next is services and third is deployments so basically a pod it's the smallest deployable unit of computation and a pod is a group of one or more containers so whenever we use containers we need to use the wrapper which is uh, a pod and a pod is specific to kubernetes right a container could be deployed independent of kubernetes also so and a pod like in here we have pod one which has just one container but the pod two has two containers one is which contains the application other is it contains some database in on right so next we saw services services were managing all the traffic to the pods which is like further mapped to the containers right so all the trap we saw like we were declaring target port as 3000 which was load balancing the traffic to the five replicas that were declared and we also saw that we created a deployment so deployment was a wrapper around the pods which made sure that we always have five replicas running and if any of the pods or containers goes down it would make sure it creates a new instance of it and it always has five running deployments also provides a lot of additional things like rolling the releases rolling back the release like creating new releases and rolling back the releases also in case something is messed up and all uh, yeah so these were the three most important kubernetes components that we use for our hello world app so, so by now you might be clear that what kubernetes is right why do you need to learn it and we also seen how do we deploy a simple application to kubernetes and we have seen some basic components of kubernetes which was pods services and deployments right in the future videos i'll be talking about each one of these components in detail i will also i'll be covering not just these three components but i'll be covering all the components of kubernetes and if you like this video give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to this channel because it gives a lot of motivation thank you